Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to explore the idea of creating various moons around various planets using nothing but a dual planetary system. We're going to use Universe Mark Square to explore this idea and possibly discover how some of the moons in our solar system and possibly outside of our solar system were actually formed. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So Universe Sandbox actually has quite a lot of uh, dual planetary simulations which are very, very impressive. Some of them actually look really amazing, like this one right here, where two Earths just kind of exchange mass until one of them kind of disappears and becomes a tiny, tiny dot. But interestingly, some of these simulations may actually represent a very realistic scenario of dual planetary systems. These do exist out there in the universe, and we might even have a couple of those right here in our solar system, but we're going to be talking about specifically which ones in one of the future videos. But today we're going to take a look at uh, one of these simulations right here, where we basically have two Earths orbiting around one another at a relatively near radius of one radii. And uh, here, if you actually wait long enough, they'll kind of just warm up because of the tidal effects, but usually they will not start doing anything spectacular. They'll just get really, really hot. Now we know that there's at least one sort of system in our solar system that has a very similar uh, situation where one body is actually much more massive than the other body, but they do have relatively similar orbital parameters and very relatively similar um, effects on one another. The system I'm talking about is Pluto Charon. So here's Charon and there's Pluto and they basically kind of orbit around one another in a very peculiar way. Um, if I actually enable orbits, you'll see that they both are affecting each other relatively interestingly. So they, they have a very center in between them, which is just outside of Pluto. And basically they're both attracted to each other and they have relatively similar masses. And they do look like basically two planets. Now what I want to do is I'm gonna try to see if I can create something almost exactly like this using nothing but um, a dual planetary system that you just saw a few seconds ago. But the way I'm going to do it is as follows. I'm going to assume that one of these uh, planets or one of these objects is going to be really, really dense. Specifically here, we're talking about very highly metallic object. Basically, it contains a lot of metal. This one here is going to be not so dense. It's going to contain maybe mostly ices. And let's actually see what happens to these two objects as they orbit around one, one another. And you'll notice that almost right away, because um, this object is a lot more, less dense, it kind of starts losing its mass, and that's because its Roche lobe is actually um, inside of its own mass. In other words, it's going to start losing its its own uh, material, and a lot of this material is going to fall onto the other Earth. If I were to accelerate this a little bit more, you would see that it starts happening more and more, and faster and faster. And as this object loses more and more mass, and the other object grows, what we start developing is a very, very interesting... Um, I guess you could call it a dual planetary system, or in this case, almost no dual planetary system with basically a planet and rings and a moon. Now, does this remind you of something? Well, yeah, it definitely starting. It's starting to look more and more like Pluto and Charon, but it also is kind of reminiscent of what we see around us. It actually does look like Earth and the moon to some extent. Well, let's just wait a little bit. We're going to wait for all of this to cool down and to settle. And let's see what we actually do end up creating here. And what I ended up creating is basically a planet that has a kind of a slight ring around it and a relatively small uh, moon in the center. Now, this is something that we know definitely exists somewhere out there in the universe, but I don't really think there's anything like this in our own solar system, except for maybe the asteroid Chariklo that does have a very unusual ring around it that kind of looks similar to this. So maybe this is how um, this ring was actually created as well, from two binary bodies orbiting around one another and one eventually absorbing the other. Okay, let's try this again, but this time we're going to change a few parameters. We're going to place them a little bit closer to each other and we're going to make this one completely made out of metal, but this one here is going to be made completely out of rock. So this is a little bit more realistic and kind of reminiscent of what may have actually happened 
in in our own um, on our own planet where Earth had quite a lot of iron and the object that approached it and possibly hit it, known as Theia, and this is actually the current hypothesis for the creation of the moon, was very likely mostly made up of um, rock and possibly some organic materials and maybe even water. In other words, it was a lot less dense. Now, we think it actually hit our planet Earth, but what if it actually didn't hit it? What if it just passed by relatively closely and became a binary system with our planet and this is maybe what happened? Notice how a lot of the rocky stuff flies out of this uh, planet and then lands on our planet Earth. Now, we know that Earth rocks and Moon rocks are practically the same. We know that they basically have the same composition, they have very, very similar um, identity, they have uh, very similar oxygen composition inside of them, which is very unusual, which basically means that Earth and Moon were created from the same object. But what if, actually, what happened was that Moon kind of fell apart like we see right here, and then dropped its own rocks on the surface of our planet Earth that was mostly made up of metal. What if this is actually what happened here and there wouldn't, there was no actual collision? What if it just kind of did this? It literally fell apart, uh, bombarding our planet Earth with its remains. And this is why Earth rocks are like moon rocks. They're essentially just moon rocks. And the moon never collided with anything. So this is just one possibility, although very, very unlikely, but it is kind of possible from what you can see in this particular simulation. Now I'm going to run this a little bit more um, just to kind of enjoy the beautiful effects here, but also just to see what's going to happen to this system as the time goes by. You can see there's a lot of collisions. There's quite a lot of various moons that are formed. And uh, there's definitely some kind of a rain form in here as well. So let's maybe wait a little bit, a few minutes, and see what actually happens as the time goes by. And it looks like what we're left with are planet Earth, that's a little bit more massive than, than the actual planet Earth, then the moon that's just a little bit more massive than the actual moon as well, also a lot more closer to Earth, but it will eventually move away from here due to tidal uh, interactions. And then there's a few other objects, a few other fragments that are either really far away or are orbiting in the vicinity of Earth as well. So this is actually very interesting. Some of these objects will eventually collide with the moon or the Earth and possibly cause some destruction and uh, will most likely form craters that will be similar to the craters we see on the actual moon as well. So this is very, very unusually interesting. Okay, well, let's try another one here. And let's vary some of the parameters um, a little bit again. So first of all, let's maybe go into the simulation here and change one of these to completely made out of water. The other one is going to be completely made out of rock. So the density here is a little bit less prominent now, but as you can see, the water world starts to basically fall apart right away. And we'll probably witness quite a similar kind of interaction. Oh, wow. Or not. They might actually combine completely. That's interesting. So that's not really expected, but that happened. Okay, how about we do this again, but this time change one of them into an, a world made out of entirely of hydrogen. And look at that. Yeah, that's not going to work for sure. That will definitely absorb the second planet right away. Yeah, so that's clearly not what happens, but it is a very interesting interaction. Basically here, the, uh, the, the gigantic Earth number two was so big in terms of size, but uh, mostly because of the low density, that it essentially absorbed the smaller Earth. Okay, so all of these simulations are actually pretty cool and definitely demonstrate the interactions that binary planets or dual planets might actually have. But I do really think that this one in particular, when you change the densities of two of these objects to one being uh, maybe more metallic and one being less metallic and more more silicate based, which is kind of what we think Theia was like, does create this very interesting simulation where every time you run it for this particular dual planetary system, um, one of these objects will actually start to slowly lose its mass, transfer its mass to the other object, and eventually start creating a very interesting world in the middle with a very interesting moon around it. So this, this will actually remain as the rocky moon, and this will become um, a, a world with a very big iron core covered by the rock from the other object. 
And this actually happens every time you run the simulation, but sometimes this moon turns into many moons and sometimes it remains as a single moon. So maybe just maybe this is what happened to the pluto Charon system. So maybe there was no collision, maybe they were born from um, a single ring that became two planets and those two planets or two dwarf planets later became um, a larger object and a smaller object orbiting around it. And maybe, just maybe, this is also how our own Earth got its moon as well. So as you can see, we've created quite a lot of moons here, which will slowly um, either fly away or turn into one single object. And notice how it only took me like two or three simulations to actually create a system where there's at least one object that actually does resemble our own moon. It sort of orbits in a relatively circular pattern. It sort of has a relatively similar size to mass ratio um, compared to our own planet. And it seems to be interacting with our planet Earth just in the same way that um, Earth interacts with the moon. So if I run this long enough, other objects will disappear and this will be the only object that's going to be left here. So let's just maybe run this a little bit more just to find out if this actually happens. And as you can see, this object is actually kicking out all of the other mini moons, miniature moons out of the system, making it the dominant moon of this particular Earth. There's a few more smaller um, moons orbiting around Earth right now, but they will be gone as well as it interacts with them. So this is actually very, very cool. So once again, I was able to create an Earth-Moon system, but this time using nothing but a binary planetary system, which is very unusual. Could it have happened this way? Well, right now we don't really know. Right now, the most common prevalent hypothesis is that Earth was collided with a larger object known as Theia, and that's how the Moon was created. But this particular simulation shows us that it can be also created in other ways. Anyway, so we'll talk more about the dual planetary systems in one of the future videos and we're going to explore them in more detail as well. But hopefully you learned something from this video and now you know a little bit more about our solar system, our planet Earth, and of course about our own moon as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Come back here tomorrow to learn something else interesting that you may have not known before. Anyway, space out. And now that we've actually destroyed our planet Earth in many different ways, we can maybe, just maybe, cool it down a little bit and see what it's going to look like if we actually have a relatively comfortable temperature of, let's just say, 20 degrees Celsius. And maybe just give it some water as well. And look at that. We were able to transform Earth back into its habitable state. That's pretty awesome. And it now has at least three more moons orbiting around it. And most of them look pretty awesome. Anyway. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos or who wants to learn through video games, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.